Atlanta Falcons. It is a wet day in Foxborough, Massachusetts. They better move faster than that. Here come the New England Patriots. What a good matchup for you. Week three of the 2009 NFL season. The Atlanta Falcons, the New England Patriots. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I am Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Pam Oliver. Both are coming up. The Atlanta Falcons get their first road test of the season. They come in 2-0. and oh. Meanwhile, on the other side, the New England Patriots are 1-1, one and one, and everybody's wondering what happened last week at the Meadowlands and how'd they lose the way they lost to the New York Jets. So I've got him to ask about that, and that's you, Troy Aikman. What's going on with the New England Patriots and Tom Brady? Well, I know Tom Brady came out this week and said he's still trying to find his way, not 100% comfortable within the pocket, a few new faces. But I know this, in watching those games, they're not that far off. But one of the real keys today is in the first two games, they have thrown the ball 70% of the time. They have got to get more bounds. Tom Brady said as much. It's a good opponent to try to do that against. They gave up a lot of rushing yards last week. Yeah, that opponent, the Atlanta Falcons, we're excited to watch them. We haven't done a lot of their games, and I know you personally are excited to watch young Matt Ryan go to work. This will be my first opportunity to watch Matt Ryan in person, and I think he's going to be an absolute superstar in this league. He has all the skills that you can want. Hard to believe that he's just making his 20th NFL start. Of course, some good players around him. And you look at the Falcons, two big wins against teams that went to the playoffs a year ago at home. This is a road game against the New England Patriots. I know they're struggling, but they are still the Patriots. This would be huge for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, there is never a good time to face the New England Patriots. It's still Bill Belichick, and it's still Tom Brady. Take a break. Come back after this from the Verizon Football Zone here on Fox. Time now for the autotrader.com ultimate quarterback comparison before this game between the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. You know who plays quarterback for New England, three time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady, and one of the up and coming stars in the NFL, Matt Ryan for Atlanta. Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. What's the weather like today? Sloppy, rainy all day. Should be tough for those quarterbacks to sling it around. Down to the field in the rain, Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, weather may be a bit of an issue for the Falcons, at least initially. They haven't had to deal with any elements, having played both of their games indoors. Now, Mike Smith says it's critical for his specialists to make good decisions, especially when playing into the wind. Injury update, Wes Welker is out. Randy Moss is in for the Patriots. For the Falcons, Jarius Norwood is a scratch. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. Try and stay dry down there. We get ready for football. Should be a good matchup. Intercon conference battle Brady and the Pats Ryan and the Falcons next on Fox well the rain has lightened up a little bit it was nasty about an hour ago so all things considered and with the forecast being what it was I think the weather's about as good as we could have expected for the Patriots and the Falcons Kostowski will kick it off for New England that means we'll get the early look at Matt Ryan as Eric Weems is waiting for it deep for Atlanta. Glad you are with us today on Fox. Take a knee. Now Weems has got a wet right knee. His work is over for a minute and the work day for Matt Ryan is just starting. So far the Falcons are 2 and 0 and when you talk to Mike Malarkey the offensive coordinator he is in love with his offensive line. Yeah as he should be I mean you look at what this group was able to do a year ago one of the best rushing teams in the National Football League that's what they're going to hang their hat on. Little play action from Ryan safe throw and who's on the other end it's Finner and he's got a first down good start and a 13 yard catch and run Brian Finner has his second catch of the season. Look at the defense for New England they come in third overall in the defensive rankings because of yardage per game but that number can be a little bit misleading there are a lot of new faces on this defense. And this is a secondary and a defense that doesn't have an interception in two games. Oh, 
This time they do hand it off and it's Michael Turner. Who was busy last year he led the league. With total rushes last season 376 and that was his 51st carry in 2009. Hey, you know Michael Turner the longtime back up there in San Diego got his opportunity to be the featured back last year and and boy did he make the most of it. You know a tough nosed guy a big guy and he'll pound you and pound you he'll get four yards four yards and if you give him a crease he's capable of taking it the distance. Second down and ten again it's Turner. Turner picks up three over the left side Lee Bodden off the corner to make the stop for New England. And so a third and seven coming up for Atlanta Turner by the way last year. One thousand six hundred sixty nine yards rushing 17 rushing touchdowns he checks out. Mike Smith second year head coach what a year he and Matt Ryan had last season. Ryan over the middle hits his fullback and that's rather Snelling and Snelling out of the backfield picks up 21 Snelling featured now more with the injury to Jarius Norwood who's out with a concussion Atlanta goes to the bunch sets on both sides of the line of scrimmage there they've got three to the front side to Matt Ryan and Snelling just comes out underneath they run everybody off they open up the underneath throw there to Snelling. You know questions coming in as to how much would they miss Jarius Norwood who's predominantly their third down back but Jason Snelling has had playing time the first two weeks. Key first down there. Had his first touchdown last week against Carolina back to Turner on first down and he pounds it inside the 40. He carries Merriweather with him and picks up seven. And then there's Bill Belichick. In his 10th year here in New England, three time Super Bowl champ. And so much to say about the roster turnover and what Bill Belichick expects out of his group. Doesn't matter who's lining up and who's wearing the uniform. They expect a lot here in New England. Second down and three. Quick throw by Ryan. That's Roddy White. And he's got a first down to the 29 yard line. Picked up seven. And a good start to this game for Atlanta. Another first down. They'll set up at the New England 29. And Bill Belichick can't be happy about this. Even though in weeks one and two, they have held opposing offenses to under 100, under 300 yards. Last week, the New York Jets almost went for 200 in the second half of that game. Come into this game against Atlanta, first possession, and they're moving. Here's a blitz. Ryan rolls right, throws out of the reach of Jenkins. They were coming off the edge the backside of Matt Ryan. They didn't get there but forced a quick throw at second and ten. You know a young quarterback a, a team that even though it was eleven and five last year and a playoff team in a lot of ways still young and still trying to to gain some confidence at an early time in the season and to come out and have an opening possession like this is very encouraging. Play action from Ryan as he rolls right this time he hits and the pass is caught Roddy White another first down a 13 yard completion to number 84 and this just one of the things that they can do with Matt Ryan they put him on the move a throw right on target you get accustomed to seeing that I mean that's one of the real strengths of Matt Ryan Roddy White puts his feet down gets him in but a good job right there of being on the move a wet ball and still delivering it accurately. Wildcat formation with Matt Ryan at the top of the formation on your picture. They direct snap it to Snelling and he goes straight ahead and picks up three. Now, I talked to Bill Belichick the other day about how much time do they spend preparing for the Wildcat. And this isn't really a Wildcat. Mike Malarkey the offensive coordinator did a lot of this type of stuff in Pittsburgh a little different from the actual Wildcat but but Bill Belichick who got exposed with it you know in the first game against Miami last year and that's when it became very fashionable around the league. But he feels that they've got some answers for it. I wouldn't expect Atlanta to have much success with that formation. 
Second and seven, and the handoff is to Turner. Cuts back and just does get tripped up. Ty Warren made the stop, a gain of five, and it'll bring up third down and short. While the Atlanta Falcons are down in here close, realize that their place kicker Jason Elam is suffering from a bad hamstring, and the jury is out as to whether he will kick here this afternoon. It could be their punter, Kanan. It's third and two. Ryan incomplete as receiver Finneran fell down. It's fourth down, and Elam does come on. But during the pregame warmups, he was holding for Kanan back to the third down play. They got a high low read. They got Gonzalez going to the corner, and you see it looked like they got away with a little bit of a hold on him. You see Gonzalez looking for the flag, but you know, good job there by New England. They gave up some yards, but they kept them from scoring the touchdown. A heavy wrap on the right leg of Jason Elam. He's got a pulled hamstring. 26 yard try. Rain pounding down, and that little chip shot is good. The Falcons take it down the field. Opening possession up 3 0 in Foxborough. They hang those banners here in Foxborough, Gillette Stadium. Jason Elam good for 26 during pregame warmups. He was really in some pain. And in fact, switch places with Michael Kanan, who's got a big leg, is their kickoff specialist. He'll kick it away here anyway. Last week, five kickoffs, five touchbacks. But it could be something that develops as Elam's bothered by bad hamstring. This is Moroni, and he's going to take it out. Lawrence Moroni is flipped shy of the 20, and it was Weems downfield who made the play after a 21 yard return. Here comes Brady. Here comes the Patriots down three. Tom Brady making sure that those footballs are nice and dry. I guarantee you. I mean, no one had a harder time throwing a wet football than I did. And I'd be right over there with him. Although watching Brady in warmups, it did not seem to be a factor him throwing with the wet footballs. Pass underneath and he hits Sammy Morris. Good start for the Patriots out across the 35. 20 yard pickup. Sammy Morris right out of the gate. Nicholas on the tackle for Atlanta. Take a look at the starting lineups and so many records and streaks were broken last week with that loss at the Meadowlands. They lost a halftime lead, 9 3 at the half. They won 42 straight when leading at the half. Which was a post NFL merger 1970 record. They fake the reverse. Brady's in trouble, steps through it and throws high. And there's an open receiver, Galloway, and Brady overthrew him. And how much that had to do with the rain and the slickness of the football, I don't know. But we've seen that now, you know, through the first couple of games to where we're just not accustomed to. Tom Brady's got an open guy there and Joey Galloway does a good job of coming off the ball making it look like run with all the play action in the backfield and Tom Brady has time and an open guy and, and just missed him high. The fake throwing it to the right screen to the left. This is what the Patriots do and they do it with fault. Gain of nine is Deku made the stop. For the Falcons. You know, they weren't able to get to the screen game much last week because of all the pressure that the Jets brought. But Logan Mankins, the left guard, he does a good job there of coming out on Curtis Loft and the middle linebacker getting a block in a pretty nice game. And when you're playing a team like Atlanta that is going to play more zone as opposed to man, the screen game then is elevated in your playbook. Third down and one, and the give is to the up back. That was Sammy Morris. And Morris has enough for a first down. We look at the defense for Atlanta. They check in 22 in the NFL and team defense, and this crowd applauds either the first down or the fact that the Patriots actually ran the ball as they started the day with three straight passes. But there are a lot of changes defensively from a year ago. Spent seven of their eight draft picks on defense. 
And that secondary will be tested by Brady today. That's Maroney. Off the edge to midfield. And that's really going to be a key. I mean, you look at the first two games, and certainly the second half of that game against Buffalo, circumstances dictated having to throw the football. But last week did not, and yet they were still very heavy throwing the football. You can't throw it 70% of the time and rely on Tom, especially when he struggled the way that he has to be effective. John Abraham, the sack specialist for the Falcons, on the sideline here early. Quick throw. That's Moss. With a blocker in front of him, Randy Moss has a first down. Let's go for a game break. Rather, the Jets and the Titans are 0-2 and taking it on the chin early. Brady down the middle. That's Moss. Overthrown. Penalty flag is down. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Number 98 defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. So they get the personal foul. 15 yards but missed a touchdown as Randy Moss was overthrown. Jamal Anderson, he comes in. You see him on the backside and, you know, could have pulled up. Not much of a hit there, but that's what they're looking for. And then Moss looked like they had pretty decent coverage there on the back end, but one-on-one. -on -one, on a safety and then he goes down and that's the challenge. I mean you rolled him you rolled a Randy Moss but you've got less of a cover guy to safety trying to play him deep and he got tangled up and they, they get the first down because of the penalty but but could have been and should have been a touchdown and off to Maroney a little stutter step and a good carry on first down picked up five. You know we would play against Randy Moss when he first came into the league and constantly would roll coverage his way but within five yards from the line of scrimmage he's already by the corner and now it's one on one on a safety and that's just a mismatch and I've always thought that they should try to put two corners on Randy Moss in order to give yourself the best chance of slowing him down. So Brady's missed a couple of open receivers here early. Back to the ground game, Maroney hit the hole hard and is brought down right at the marker. Depends on the spot. Peterson on the tackle for Atlanta. It's enough for a first down, says Alberto Riveron, our referee here today. And so people say, well, what is it for Brady? Welker's inactive for the second straight game. Is it because he doesn't have Welker? Is it because he's coming back from the knee injury and the knee surgery missed all of last year. Peyton Manning was doing the same last year started three and four people wondered the same thing and then the Indianapolis Colts won their last nine games once he settled in. Penalty flag on the play as the pass is caught by Morris and Morris again brought down at the marker but it looks like this one's coming back. It is. Illegal motion number 33 offense moving forward at the snap five yard penalty replay first down. You know these are the types of penalties they had a few of them last week that, that just bog you down and, and this is an important possession I think for certainly Atlanta but I think it's important for New England because of the troubles that they've had once they've gotten into the red zone. If Atlanta is able to hold them here to just a field goal attempt then I think that that's going to really frustrate this New England offense and bring back a lot of thoughts to the struggles that they've had through the first two games. Handoff is to fall. And a good pickup on first and 15 of seven yards lost in the middle linebacker made the stop. Atlanta doing a good job right now or excuse me New England doing a good job at least of of trying to maintain some balance and so even though at times on this possession they've gotten into some some longer down and distances that are predominantly then passing downs they've been able to run the ball and pick up some pretty good yards to get themselves back in manageable down and distances. Tenth play of this drive Brady slings it hits Moss. A yard shy of a first down. 
picked up seven. And Tom Brady had all day there to throw the ball. And you know, I know what Atlanta wants to do. If if you scout New England over the first two weeks in the Buffalo game, they didn't bring a lot of pressure. They were able to get pressure on Brady with a four man rush. Last week against the Jets, a lot of extra defenders, a lot of linebacker blitzes, secondary players. And he knows, Mike Smith does, that they're going to have to mix it up here today. Brady takes it and picks it up. Patriots are two for two on third and one during this drive. I know you used to hate that play, but Brady seems to have no problem. He did it throughout last week at the Meadowlands as well, just taking a quick snap and pushing forward for the first down. Well, I didn't hate it. We just didn't. <laughs> we just didn't have it in our offense. Well, I, because you probably no, no, hated no. it. We figured there were other guys that got paid to carry the ball. Oh, we. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson is laughing back in the studio. <laughs> First and goal. They think the handoff. Brady has all day. Back of the end zone. Incomplete for Galloway. He was out of bounds. And Maroney, who was ready to celebrate with Galloway, turned around and said, oh, you're out of bounds? Never mind. You know, I tell you, that's that's on Joey Galloway, too. I mean, that's a perfectly thrown ball. It was good coverage, actually, but Tom Brady put that ball perfectly. But Galloway just lost sight of where he was in the end zone. I mean, he comes out of that. If he comes out of it flat, that's a touchdown. A ragged start to the combination of Brady and Galloway here in 09. Now it's Maroney. He gets to the five and it's third and goal. You mentioned the red zone. It was a problem last week for the Patriots. As they took three trips in at Giant Stadium and had three field goals, no touchdowns. Right now they're 26th in the NFL, three for eight, scoring touchdowns in the opponent's red zone. And that was the difference. I mean, last week they had almost 200 yards of offense in the first half against the Jets. Moved it at will, but didn't come away with seven points. Third and goal over the middle. Pass is caught, but short of the end zone. Falk and a good play by Loft in the middle linebacker. Sure was. What New England was trying to do was a lot like what had Atlanta had done on their first offensive possession. Run a high low there on the middle linebacker. See if they can't get him deeper into the end zone covering the back line and then sneak it underneath to the running back and have him run into the end zone and and just a good defensive play by Curtis Lofton. 21 yard try by Gostowski. And just about an identical drive to what the Falcons put together on their first possession. Brady missed a couple of open receivers on that drive and kind of a lukewarm reception for the offense. Brady left some points out there tied at three. Chance for the offensive line to get together on the bench. Talk about that first possession. New England they were split down the middle. They were seven runs seven passes. On that opening drive, so there's your balance, and there is only 42 seconds left in this first quarter. It has flown by. Well, Tom Brady has been hit so much the first two weeks of this season that I don't think they really have much choice. They've they've got to balance it up a little bit just so just so he can stay upright. 15th play of that drive was the 21-yard field goal by Gostowski. This is Weems on the return, and Weems still on his feet and is wrestled down at the 24 by McGowan 26 yard return another shot at it from Matt Ryan we're tied at three for Atlanta first time they had the ball five times they ran it six times Matt Ryan threw it Matt Ryan who played at Boston College Match years there. Tom Brady took New England to three Super Bowls, won two of them. Ryan hands off. That is Turner, and he goes backward. A loss of three, and Jarvis Green came in to make the play. Will Fork plugged up the middle. 
Got penetration there on the inside with Jarvis Green and then Vince Wilfork in the middle doing a good job on McClure and you know driving him back and New England going with a little bit of a deep different approach defensively this year because of the different players that they have more of a four down defensive front as opposed to the three four scheme that we've grown so accustomed to seeing them play. That is the end of the first quarter three three game the NFL and Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox team. Three three game as we start the second quarter second down and twelve. For Atlanta. Pass is caught. Jenkins and what a tackle. Lee Bodden. Form tackle out in the open field, a gain of five. The Jenkins catch and Bodden, you know, does a good job there just in the open field and being able to get him to the ground immediately. That's the key with this Atlanta passing attack. A lot of times they want to try to get the ball into their hands on the move. New England knowing that wanting to have a defender there get him on the ground right away. Third and seven. Ryan rolling right throws it away. You know, that doesn't really look like much for Atlanta. But really I mean even though this is still this is the second year early in his second season that that's the kinds of things that Matt Ryan was doing so well as a rookie instead of trying to force some of those throws just throwing it away and allowing his special teams to come out and make the punt. You know, he does not make a lot of poor decisions and nor does he force many throws. New England very good on third down defensively last week at the Jets. Here's a terrible punt. See what kind of a bounce it takes a New England bounce. Off the foot of Canaan. 29 yard punt. Good field position for Tom Brady. And the Patriots offense in a 3 3 game. When we went to break, a late flag was thrown, and we'll get the call, it appears, from Alberto Riveron. During the kick, number 21 on the kicking team was the first player to touch the ball after going out of bounds. The five yard penalty will be added to when New England got the ball first down. So instead of starting at their own 44 the Patriots start at their own 49 and there's the play by Owens who was chucked a couple of times out of bounds. And once you go out of bounds you got to get back into the field to play as quickly as possible. He did that. I think I think once he grabbed the ball he, he knew he had made a mistake. from Brady who has all day down the middle that's Moss and what a play defensively by Brian Williams got his left arm in front of it and saved a touchdown as the ball was about to float into the arms of Randy Moss well you see play action here and so Randy Moss just comes off the, the line of scrimmage wanting to sell as if it's a running play you see he's not going full speed just kind of coasting off and then there he goes and he opens it up and just not quite able to get the ball out far enough. They fake a screen left throw one to the right from Morris tackled from behind by Thomas Johnson a gain of 10. And here's where Randy Moss usually is pretty good but see see where his arms were and Williams does a good job of getting in there and knocking it down but if Randy is able to use his body and slow down which he is so good at and go up like a basketball player then he's got a huge size advantage over Brian Williams and is able to make that catch game break coming up Giants up 14 to nothing on Tampa Bay here's Taylor okay okay Fred Taylor picks up eight. Here's Kurt Menefee. The game was 2 and 0, and now he gets one to Sidney Rice. Second and two. Here's Taylor. Plows ahead. Still going. And wrestled down inside the 15. Coleman saved a touchdown as Fred Taylor picks up 17 yards. Well, Fred Taylor is just a hard nosed football player. You see, I mean, he gets bottled up right there, but. You know he just keeps his feet going and is able to break a tackle and, and keep on going. You know this is a guy who I think some people after the year that he had last year thought maybe maybe he was done but 
you know this guy was a 1200 yard rusher as recently as 07. Now number 15 on the all time rush list is Taylor who stays after it. Down inside the 10. A gain of seven. Deku on the stop. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey Joe, Mike Smith actually addressed the defensive line before it went back out on the field. He's very unhappy about how the Patriots have been able to run the ball to start the game. He complained that the defensive line is playing soft and he is demanding that the D line start attacking the ball. Back to you. All right, Pam, that has not happened. Fred Taylor has been able to run at will. He gets it again and pounds it in. Hardly touched. Trying to reestablish that run game, and it works here for the touchdown. Watch the interior offensive line right there, and that's where they got most of those yards. I mean, they just took it right into the teeth of that defensive front, and, and that's demoralizing for any defensive unit, not only when they run the ball, but when they just run the ball right down your throat, right in the middle of that offensive line. 10 3. Fred Taylor, his first series carrying the football. Patriots ran at the last four plays and pounded in, lead it by seven. Fred Taylor just picked up his 64th career rushing touchdown. Patriots ran at the last four plays of that drive, just a six play drive, 51 yards, two and a half minutes, and a 10 3 lead. Weems is waiting for the kick, and the wind blows the football off the tee. Talk about the changeover on defense for the Atlanta Falcons. Certainly that's the case for the New England Patriots, which we'll talk about during this next possession for the Falcons. Williams will take it from inside the 10. Good return. Really good return and terrific starting field position for Atlanta. New England leads it 10 to 3, and Mike Smith moments ago took a bite out of that defense. Does not like what he's seeing. Patriots up seven. What a run it's been under Robert Kraft for the Patriots. I mean, they always show Robert and his son Jonathan on camera, but how about Myra? Robert's wife Jonathan's mom and what a terrific run it's been here with New England and a sharp pass to Michael Jenkins good for 18 yards since Bob Kraft has been here three Lombardi trophies five AFC conference titles and now the Falcons are going to try and hurry things up uh, change the tempo here a little bit. Timeout taken by New England. Belichick wanted to take it. He's the one who called it on the sideline as Atlanta quickens the pace. First down, Falcons down seven when we come back. Some confusion defensively. It's why Belichick called a timeout. Well, Atlanta went to the no huddle. They were in three wide receiver set. Atlanta had, or New England had four defensive backs. Adalis Thomas a little confused as to where he needed to be lined up. Same personnel groupings on each side as Turner okay, 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 okay. carries Mike Wright with him for seven yards. And they're going back to it here. And I think we're really one of the main reasons why they're going to this no huddle isn't so much to dictate tempo as much as it is they like the defensive personnel that New England currently has on the field and they want to keep them on there. They throw it on second and three that pass is dropped by Roddy White. So third and three. Uh, 
Now, Ty Warren gets through and he puts a puts a pretty good hit right there on Matt Ryan trying to hold him up. You know those defensive linemen they <laughs> they're well aware that there's a referee standing right there watching the quarterback at all times ready to throw the flag. A good job by Ty Warren pulling up. And then Matt Ryan a little feisty at the end of it. Pushing Warren on his way back to his feet third and three. Ryan has it batted away. Will Fork got his hand up. They are calling this play live as Riveron runs with it. Springs is into the end zone. No call is made. It looked like the pass was batted down. But they're signaling touchdown. And a challenge flag has already been thrown by Mike Smith. Let's take another look. Did this ball ever hit the ground? Yeah. I mean, what are we doing here? Well, that's <laughs> how do they miss that? I, I, from where we're at, it was an easy thing to see that the ball had hit the ground and an incomplete pass. And you know, I'm not sure. You know, I think this is part of the frustrating thing for a coach is is having to blow a challenge on a call that should be textbook. Atlanta is challenging the ruling on the field of whether was it fumble or an incomplete pass. Timeout. So. Looked like a clean throw batted into the air hit the turf. Mike Smith a little smile on his face as he had to throw the challenge flag. We'll get the call when we come back. Alberto River on the referee had to put his head under that hood and look at that replay and think we missed that. I mean this is about as clear cut. Will Fork knocks it down the thing takes nine bounces. Springs picks it up. Mike Smith is thinking you've got to be kidding me that I have to throw a challenge flag on that they called it a touchdown. Well he won't have an easier challenge will he. And Bill Belichick looked like he was a little put out by the whole thing. I think maybe for him is that you know it slows up momentum and it was a good stop by them defensively and you know he just wants the ball back in his offense's hands with some momentum and now with this delay it kills any that they might have had. Well the delay is now to figure out where the ball is going to be placed and it will be interesting to see what the Falcons do. The pass is on was going forward therefore it's an incomplete pass. New England will not be charged with timeout. It is fourth and three on the 34 yard line. Please, please reset the clock to show 10 26 10 26 please. First of all it was Atlanta that challenged the call and they are not charged a timeout. Now it's fourth and three because of where they are on the field. Their kicker Elam has a bad hamstring. No surprise that they're going to go for it here on fourth and three. Ball is at the 34 of New England. And right now Matt Ryan having a, having a difficult time trying to get everybody lined up. He's got to burn a timeout. So after that delay the Falcons can't get out of the huddle right. And Ryan is hot. Well, I guarantee you Mike Smith is hot too. You know after all of that time to be able to get the play and know what you're going to do there on fourth down and then to. To not be able to execute it once they put the ball in play. And when they broke the huddle immediately and no one knew, no one knew where they were going. So this. You know this is if they're going to stay with the play that was called. It's some type of play I would think that's got a little different wrinkle something for this specific situation and that's why there was as much confusion coming out of the huddle as what there was. So it's fourth and three the Falcons pass on a 52 yard field goal try. And now the Falcons will re huddle they haven't started the play clock yet. Now they do. A roll to the right. Ryan throws. Pass was behind but caught. And a first down. It's Roddy White. Good for seven. And a good job by Roddy White. He's working against Terrence Wheatley. And he pushes up and, and snaps it off and, and really gives a nice target then to Matt Ryan. You see, he pushes him up. And then as he snaps it out to the sideline that's what creates the separation. And even though it wasn't a, a, a well thrown ball it was behind him. 
He had so much space that it was a relatively easy catch. Here is Turner. And a good run on first down. Picks up four. Telly Banta Kane, the first one there. On that fourth down play, Terrence Wheatley, as you mentioned, was in coverage. The Patriots start today with Jonathan Wilhite not active. Wheatley last year was a second round pick out of Colorado. Darius Butler, a rookie, a second round pick this year, is out with a thigh injury. So a little bit of a different look to that secondary for the Patriots here this afternoon. Second and six. Down the middle, it's Jenkins. Makes a catch, sets up first and goal, and they'll mark Jenkins down at the two. You know, that's a throw where there's some bodies down there in the secondary that you've got to concern yourself with. Matt Ryan tries drilling it in. You know, did he make the catch? Ball hits the ground, but it definitely looked like he had his hands underneath it and secured it before that happened. Remember back a few years, several years ago, Jerry Rice Here on comes a similar catch changed the ruling. Before the snap, Bill Belichick throws the challenge flag. And he apologizes to Al Riveron. New England is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. Time out. Bill was trying to find that flag in his sock and then had to hurry up and get it out there prior to the snap. Where is it? Where did I put that thing? Get it out. Throw it. We'll come back with a call after this. During the commercial, we have looked at it a number of times. Right now, the ball is at the two. There's a little movement in there when Jenkins goes to the ground, but the question is, as it always is, is there enough evidence to overturn the call, which is catch? And you could make the argument that Jenkins had control of it the entire time. There is a little movement when the player Jenkins goes to the ground, and we'll get the call from Al Riveron. The ruling on the field stands. It is a completion. New England will be charged with a timeout. So New England is down to one timeout. 8.48 left in the half. And Atlanta down by seven has first and goal from the two. Turner and that okay, okay, is a okay, touchdown okay. touchdown Atlanta as Turner pounds it in his second of the year touchdown Atlanta for Michael Turner who had 17 rushing touchdowns last season pretty good drive right there and you're going to see Michael Turner gets in behind the fullback Obi Mahaley. And they do a good job of kind of cleaning things up. And even though they're able to get to Michael Turner before he gets to the goal line, Michael Turner is just a hard guy to push backwards. Well, you look at that replay and you wonder if his knees were down before he broke the plane. Either way, no challenge. The touchdown stands and it's a 10 10 game. Take another look and just pay attention to the knees and we'll just see. Going to that last replay, the knees are down and. I think he broke the plane. It's a touchdown and a tie game. And Michael Jenkins, who set that up, smiling as Turner in the offense gets back over to the sideline. So we have seen Troy so far in this first half with 8.43 left to go. Almost mirror images back and forth between Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, and these two offensive teams. Yeah, I think so. And we've got a lot of uh, you know similarities between these two teams and coming in, at least from New England's perspective, you say, wow, this is a game where they can get more balanced, run the football. We've certainly seen that from them. They've done a good job of having, you know, the running game that we have not seen the first couple of weeks. But, you know, Atlanta, give them credit. And the job Matt Ryan did on that last possession of coming back and facing a little adversity, 
in tying this ball game up. You know, everybody made so much about Matt Ryan being in Boston while Tom Brady was starring here for the Patriots. He said, well, like anybody else in college at that time, I was aware of how great Tom Brady was and is, but I didn't grow up idolizing him. Actually, the guy who we grew up idolizing was Brett Favre for the Green Bay Packers. If they didn't know how great he was, he'd been living under a rock yeah. in college. Here's Kevin Falk, which is affordable housing. As <laughs> the return is taken for 28 yards, Antoine Harris is on the stop. Let's go to next week in the NFL. Doubleheader day on Fox the Giants and the Chiefs other games and then late Dallas at Denver. Now it's Brady's turn throws and completes to the rookie Edelman and Julian picks up four. I think Edelman is an incredible story as you look at the schedule for next week. They're the other early games Tampa Bay Washington Lions Bears Seahawks Colts. Rams 49ers 49ers might win the NFC West after that good 2 and 0 start then the late action Edelman is a former quarterback at Kent State at eight catches last week made that last grab in the slot handoff that's fall and Kevin Falk rolls on a body no gain It'll be third down coming up for Tom Brady well and as good as Julian Edelman played last week. You, you know, you cannot replace a Wes Welker. I mean, in a lot of ways, he's the guy who makes it go. And I know Randy Moss attracts a lot of attention, but when you need the underneath throws and some separation to pick up a key first down, I mean, Wes Welker, thousand yard receiver a year ago, over 100 catches. I mean, the guy's exceptional. Out with a bad knee, passes off Edelman's hands and incomplete. Sure looked like Nick Kasher, the offensive tackle moved before the snap no flag and then Edelman had to go off his hands. Yeah Grimes in coverage. I'm not sure if Grimes got a hand on it or not. It looked like a pretty good thrown ball there by Tom Brady. A little contact at the top of that route. A little better look right here. Hard to tell but you know Edelman who you know as you said was a quarterback in college first game last week as a wide receiver inactive week one. I mean he he showed me quite a bit. Good punt by Chris Hansen. Penalty flag is thrown as Weems makes the catch out of bounds. A booming punt of 51 yards on a wet, windy day. And the initial indication is that this is against New England. I would think you'd make him punt it again after. Hansen hit that one. See if he can do it two times in a row, or if you get a little jolt out of Weems returning a punt. They have that option, or tack on five yards at the end of the play. Riverone sorts that out. Number 22 of the kicking team voluntarily went out of bounds and came back in. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down, Atlanta. So Atlanta will just tack it on. I don't know about that decision as opposed to making him re punt. I mean, Weems seems like he's got a first returning punts, and Chris Hansen just hit one of his better punts of this season. But as it is, Atlanta will start with it at their own 27. Turner carries it right up the middle. Four yard gain as we learn more about second year quarterback Matt Ryan. There it is, like Brett Favre as a kid. Big Phillies fan, so he was happy last October and maybe again this year, even into November. And here's one for the home team. He is, enjoys the TV show Fringe, which can be seen during primetime here on Fox. Second and six. Well, said it coming into this game, this guy is going to be a superstar for a long time. 
Here's Turner getting to the edge, dragged down from behind. Pierre Woods made the play, a gain of three, and a short third down coming up. You know, a lot made of of last year's team, of course, going 11 and five, and the fact that they ran the ball so well. But there's no way you can win 11 ball games in this league without having a quarterback that makes plays at some key times. And he was able to do that. And I'll tell you, you watch him very early on, and he never looked like a rookie. And pretty remarkable. Said that his training at Boston College prepared him. And a lot of the things they do now offensively in Atlanta are the very same things he did in college. Third down and three. Ryan comes underneath and hits Booker. And Marty Booker has a first down at the 45. I'll tell you another thing that's interesting, Joe, is if you look at last year's draft, the thought that they have a franchise quarterback in Matt Ryan for the next 10 plus years. Possibly a franchise left tackle in Sam Baker and a middle linebacker in Curtis Lofton to build things around. We may be looking at that 08 draft and talking about some some big time players that this franchise built around. Certainly we already know they got that guy under center. On first down quick setup and throw Jenkins makes the catch. Play made defensively by Lee Bodden. Now here's a guy, Lee Bodden, who's with his third different team over the last three years. Bill Belichick, it seems to be his genius is being able to coach around deficiencies of players that he gets. And he's getting players and starting players that other organizations might not even look at. Here's a handoff to Turner, who's got the first down. When you look at this defense, Troy, and they're missing Bruski, Harrison, Vrabel, Seymour, Seau, Colvin, Ellis Hobbs. I mean, the turnover defensively has been tremendous, and yet Bill Belichick expects it just to go on like it has been here with this New England defense. And there's a player down for New England. Is that big? Vince Wilfork, I think it is. And he is really literally the anchor up front. For this different looking defense. Well he's a, he's a key part of this defense especially considering the fact that Richard Seymour is not on this team any longer and in fact through the first two ball games, Joe he had a lot more snaps than I remember him having in previous years. I mean he's been very relied on heavily and if he goes down I mean that's that's a huge blow to their run defense. So far after the loss to the Jets you get headlines like this troubling developments Brady's human offense not in any rushes their ground game has been non existent they really haven't <laughs> used it and the red zone full of blues as they were 0 for 3 at the Jets last weekend you know I laugh only because boy people have short memories don't they I mean. In 07, what Tom Brady was able to do, and, and in a lot of ways, that's why they write those headlines, was because everybody expected when they came into the season that, well, Brady's back, he's healthy, things will go right back to where they were in 07 when he had 50 touchdowns, and, you know, it doesn't quite work that way. And as Tom said, a lot has been made of his knee. You know, that hit that he took against Albert Hainsworth in the preseason against the Redskins, that shoulder has bothered him as much as anything. So on first down play action from Ryan it drops it off to Finner and he hops out of bounds right at the marker depends on the spot. Well executed play there and a good call by Mike Malarkey you're going to see a Dayless Thomas 96 he has to make a decision does he stay with Finner or does he come up and challenge Matt Ryan as soon as he takes Ryan he can't be right. Ryan gets the ball into Finner for a nice game and now with we got Warren late getting off the field. And with Atlanta again, Troy hurrying the pace and not huddling, Bill Belichick has to use the Patriots' last time out. Not something I recall them doing much of, if any, in those first two games. And yet we've seen it a lot here over the last couple of possessions. And and I really think, as I said earlier, that it has more to do with the matchups that are on the field, and they like that. And so when they when they feel that they have personnel defensively that that they match up well against. Stay in the no huddle. Don't allow them to substitute and get it going. And, and quite frankly, Matt Ryan's running very well. 
So Wilfork leads. That is creating a huge absence in the middle of this Patriots defense. It's first down Atlanta. Handoff is to Turner. And the ball comes out. Big hit in the middle of that pileup, and no signal yet. You could hear a pop. Turner has fumbled once this season. You know, it's a guessing game when you get down there trying to figure out, you know, who who comes out of the pile with it isn't isn't always the guy who initially had to recover it. Patriots have it. And a big turnover by Michael Turner. James Sanders comes out of there with a football. You see, he's got it covered up very well, but you come in with a helmet. I couldn't tell exactly who it was that knocked it loose. And, you know, Michael Turner was not careless with the way he was carrying the ball, had both arms secured around it. But when you come in with a helmet and get the helmet on the ball, it is very difficult for any running back to maintain possession. I think it was McGowan, Brandon McGowan, who came in and forced the fumble, second of the year by Turner, and with Atlanta having all the momentum going in to take the lead. Now it's New England with a football, no timeouts left, and a handoff is to Fred Taylor. Taylor over the right side gets seven. You know, speaking of Tom Brady and what he was able to do back in in 2007 with all the big plays and the touchdowns to Randy Moss and and yet coming into this game they've only had three plays of 20 yards or more which which were the fewest in the NFL over the first two weeks. Second and three left side Taylor cuts up okay, field okay. and he'll be a yard and a half short of a first down. Well, this run defense for Atlanta going back to last year was not very good. And in the first couple of weeks did a decent job against Miami was very poor last week in their in their win against Carolina. And Mike Smith who's done a great job when he was the defensive coordinator in Jacksonville. You can be certain that they'll get this going as you see Van Gorder the defensive coordinator for Atlanta. That over time they'll secure this run defense. It's Brian Van Gorder. It's third down and one. Handoff. Taylor spinning has a first down. To the 40 yard line picked up four. And you wonder what Taylor would do if the Patriots would let him get into a groove and get some rhythm going in this ground game because when he's had it today. He's looked good. Yeah, and I think that's what they're trying to do. Mike Peterson there had a chance to make a tackle before he got to the line of scrimmage. He missed. But Thomas Johnson after getting it after getting chewed on a little bit by Mike Smith after the last possession and he got some pressure in there in the backfield also play action from Brady that's Moss Moss is down with another first down and the play is made by Deku and that will take us to the two minute warning 13 yards to Randy Moss after the turnover the Patriots trying to take advantage trying to get the lead before the half two minutes left. In Foxborough. Lawrence Maroney is on the sideline, injured his thigh. His return is questionable, and the same for Vince Wilfork, who left moments ago with a bad ankle. First down. Two minutes left, no timeouts left, and a handoff is to Falk. And Kevin Falk is down to the 36. A run of 12 yards, Lofton on the tackle. Well, that time Atlanta played coverage with two deep, and so you're trying to stop the run with one less defender, and Tom Brady just hands it off in a nice game. There is nobody better in the NFL at this particular drill than the two minute offense than Tom Brady. Which the Buffalo Bills know all too well. That's Edelman. Big weapon, though, not having. His receiver Wes Welker available to him who was so good in these situations underneath making things happen making catches and then runs after the catch. 
second down down the sideline and Ian Galloway don't hook up but a penalty flag comes in. Yeah, it looked like a flag in the middle on on maybe on Atlanta but because they were holding up Julian Edelman there in the middle illegal contact defense number twenty nine five yard penalty automatic first down. You know that's on the outside but that's not where the flag was the flag was inside on Julian Edelman here you see Brian Williams and there was the contact that was made beyond the five yards doesn't look like much but you know that is the way that the rule reads you, know, you talk about Tom Brady in this situation Joe and, and really why he's so good as the game slows down I mean much like it did for Joe Montana in these types of situations he never seems rushed he's willing to come underneath and a minute and eight is a lot of time relatively speaking in a no huddle situation. Brady stays on his feet throws as he's falling and it's incomplete for Randy Moss. Second and ten with a minute two left. I think that is some of the frustration for Tom Brady in this offense is I talked about it a little bit earlier their lack of big plays. Brady just not able to quite maintain his balance had he have been able to might have been able to get off a better better throw but they just have not connected on the big plays that they got so accustomed to second and ten Brady comes underneath that's Edelman makes a move looks like Welker has a first down at the 15 yard line with 50 seconds left. No timeouts remaining for the Patriots. Well, they called Julian Edelman uh, Wes Welker's mini me. And if you slapped number 83 on him, you'd think it was Wes Welker. Brady just throws it away. And then ends up on the ground. Second down and 10. 35 seconds left on the clock. Visa halftime report coming. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy scores and highlights from around the league. The Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. Beerman comes out. Helped to pressure Brady on that last play. Second down, New England. We're showing the blitz off the slot. They're coming. Pass is dropped by Galloway. Brady could not have thrown it any better and Joey Galloway who's off to a very slow start couldn't make the catch and they have the perfect protection on they slide Copen out he picks up the slot blitz a perfect throw to Joey Galloway and I think he saw Deku the safety and didn't want any part of that ball and that look tells you what Brady thinks of that last play and maybe this combination that the Patriots are waiting for between Brady and Galloway. On third down Brady steps up end zone incomplete. No penalty flags on the play as Sam Aiken who was the special teams captain is down there the intended target and he and Brady weren't on the same page. Well Sammy Aiken hasn't got a lot of work as a wide receiver he did in preseason but primarily a special teams player miscommunication not unexpected but they spent a lot of time on Friday in practice throwing the ball to each other figuring that he was going to get some playing time. It was clear that Sam Aiken did not do what Tom Brady was expected. So the 33 yard try. While they have the lead, the Patriots have to be disappointed. One for three, scoring touchdowns inside the red zone, and Brady's hot. Well, and, you, and, and this is about as frustrated as you'll see Tom Brady. I mean, he is, you can see it. it uh, pictures worth a thousand words, and, and when a ball's not caught or a guy is out there, and then that's part of it is, you know, so much has been made of his own situation coming back from a year off. But there's a lot of new faces out there trying to get his timing down with Joey Galloway. He doesn't have Wes Welker out there on the field. You know, a guy who he depended on a lot that kind of has gone unnoticed, at least nationally, is Jabbar Gaffney. And that uh, as the third receiver, and that's who Joey Galloway has basically replaced. But so much of playing quarterback and timing and confidence that the guys that are out there are going to make a play and be where they're supposed to be. And when that doesn't happen, it, it is hard and it's hard when you've had as much success 
as old number 12 has because he holds this offense to an awfully high standard. Well, Galloway's just walking around over there with nobody in particular to talk to, and Brady's the one that's getting the attention as his frustration level continues to rise. People wonder what, how his, you know, his competitiveness, I'll tell you, his fire burns hot. 20 seconds left in the half. Another misfire in the red zone by this New England offense. And here's Weems on the return for Atlanta. Knocked out of bounds by Merriweather. 23 yard return. 15 seconds left. And Bill Belichick came over and there's a better look at how hot Brady is. He's got Galloway in front of him just standing there with his hands on his hips. So that'll be at 13 10 will be the score at the half here in Foxborough. Big turnover by the Falcons on their last possession prior to this one. And then the Patriots had a chance and could not get it into the end zone. Again inside the red zone 0 for 3 last week at the Meadowlands 1 for 3 today. And a very frustrated Tom Brady and that offense will go in at half and try and figure things out. Well a big turnover by Atlanta. You know and Michael Turner a good job defensively by New England and and really a good job by Atlanta defensively only giving up the three points. So the two teams head off and it's a 13 to 10 game at the half in this interconference battle between the Atlanta Falcons and the New England Patriots. And we still are waiting for that typical look to this Patriots offense to show up here in 2009 for the Falcons their first road test of the season they will leave after a half down by three Kurt Terry Howie Michael and Jimmy on the visa halftime with scores and highlights from around the NFL. How hard is that says Brady on his way off the field. <laughs> I asked that a lot of Sunday afternoons. You, you mean now? Career. You mean now or back then? Back in the glory days. Uh, not in the glory days. Uh, they weren't all glory days. I bet when you were one in 15 or the team was one in 15 that question was asked a lot. Well they were asking me you know how hard <laughs> is it but uh, yeah I mean you hey Tom Brady is a heck of a player and they have enjoyed so much success that it's frustrating when you're not hitting on all cylinders like they have not been and yet a three point lead at the half 13 10 New England over Atlanta we'll take a break NFL on Fox will continue after. Thirteen ten, and we are seconds away from the kickoff here to start the second half. Patriots will have it. You know, New England is just going to offensively have to start scoring more points. That's easy to say, but they're going to have to make up for deficiencies on defense, which it doesn't look very good right now. Their defense, and they've scored an average of 17 points per game over the first two weekends. They've got 13 on the board today. As Falk is going to try it. Make it out to the 20. We go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Joe Atlanta defense giving up nearly 100 yards on the ground in the first half, and Mike Smith wants to fix that. He said, We just got to be better in playing our gaps. We got to be more sound in that department. He also said, If we could keep the Patriots with that potent offense to field goals, we have a very good chance of winning this game. Back to you. All right, Pam, thanks. Mike Smith lit up Thomas Johnson earlier in this game in the first half. Falcons are already without Jerry Perret, their first round pick out of Ole Miss, who they put on IR on Monday. So they were thin at the position anyway. They spend their first round pick. And here's Fred Taylor, and I'd be shocked if we don't see a lot more of Fred Taylor here in the second half and in the upcoming weeks for New England. Yeah, I mean, you talk about Atlanta defensively, and, and Perret Jerry, even though he was a rookie, he looked pretty good there in the first, you know, game and did a nice job. and. You know he helped at least solidify some things and, and so you lose a guy like that you bring in Thomas Johnson and he's got to do a much better job if they're going to be able to slow this running attack. Here's Taylor 
And they're not able to slow this running attack as Taylor, who was averaging over seven yards a carry in this game, picks up nine in a first down. Tom Brady, who was seen frustrated and yelling at the troops at the end of the first half, now turns into the motivator and trying to get guys fired up on the sideline. Yeah, my guess is that's an extension of whatever it was that was said at halftime by Tom Brady. My guess is that he was very vocal at halftime about some of the frustrations and in what they're not doing, knowing they were going to get the ball to start this half. Here's more Fred Taylor. Picks up three. Second and seven, and we go back to the first half. There's the drop by Galloway. Now, Brady, in Galloway's defense, anybody's defense, Brady's missed a few throws here as well. It's not all on the receivers. Brady missed a couple of wide open guys in the first quarter, but there's some tension there. It certainly was on the sideline between Galloway, Brady, and that offensive mix. Second and seven. Quick throw, Moss takes a seat, and he'll be a yard shy of a first down. Houston was out there defending for Atlanta. But a good job by Tom Brady getting it out. Brian Williams, he comes off the edge. This time they don't have an offensive lineman coming out to pick him up. He knows he's got to get it out, and he does. And it winds up being a positive gain. And to go back to Tom there on the sidelines, I know that's going to be analyzed and overanalyzed as we move through this week, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, his job is to be the leader of this offense. He's doing that. And from time to time, you get frustrated and you let that out. Third down and one. Here's Morris. Gets to the edge, and it's the New England ground game. It's been more impressive in this effort against the Atlanta defense. Well, gets to the edge. There, there was nobody on the edge for Atlanta defensively. I mean, a good job there by New England of being able to block at the corner and allow Sammy Morris just to, to get to the outside uncontested. And it's not until the safety, Deku, comes over the top before he's even run out of bounds. 126 rushing yards in this game already for the Patriots. That can set up play action. This one is lobbed for Watson overthrown. And these fans that are literally right in front of us in this booth, they're all looking at each other going, what is going on out there? Yeah, well, in Tom's defense here, I mean, one, he has time. But you're going to see Ben Watson. This was not an easy throw because he had to lay it over a defender. And I think Tom was hoping that Ben would take a higher angle. And so it would then make it an easier throw. You know, you underthrow that one and it's potentially intercepted. But they, they have had some open receivers. Brady comes underneath, completes the pass. And that one is to Chris Baker. Good for seven, so a shorter third down coming up. I'm interested to see these scores cycle through and to see Detroit handling the Washington Redskins and the Redskins barely won their home opener last week over the St. Louis Rams and they're getting shut out by the Detroit Lions. Lions have lost 19 straight. Third down and three and this pass is good for a first down. Caught by Galloway. <laughs> Crowd likes that, don't they? Well, you can see Matt Light on one of the premier pass rushers in the National Football League, John Abraham. They thought they were going to have to give Matt Light some help. They have from time to time, but a good job there and an easy, what should be an easy completion. I mean, Galloway is wide open, sitting it down, but even that didn't look like either one, Tom Brady or Galloway, were real confident in the throw and catch. Nothing's easy as Brady lost one for Watson. What a catch. Watson to the six. 23 yards and Benjamin Watson who had those two touchdowns 
against Buffalo in week one. A nice piece of work here. And they got a corner on him in Chris Houston. You know, but that's the size advantage. You get the ball up in the air, and Ben Watson goes up and makes a play. Tom Brady just basically just gave him an opportunity. Fourth time in the red zone. Here's Taylor. Down to the four. Washington Redskins are on the board. They scored in their first possession of the second half. So it's a 13 7 game and all eyes are on Jim Zorn and that Redskins team with Daniel Snyder. Who you know has got a quick trigger finger in the front office for the Washington Redskins. <laughs> well. You could probably say that about a few situations around the National Football League and we're only in week three. You know they go shotgun here. I was uh, going to say I, I would think they maybe just try to pound it down their throat like they did on their first four. Brady with time over the middle and the pass is nearly intercepted by Deku. Brady's lucky that ball wasn't picked off. Well, it sure was because Thomas Deku should have had that one and you know, they're just trying to get it up to to Randy Moss but Deku comes underneath it. I don't know if Brady just didn't see him because he certainly if he had have seen him he would have tried to get it up a little bit higher and the Falcons are getting a little pressure on Tom Brady which which is certainly the key. That was a key last week. Jets kept coming at him. Third down and goal. Quick setup and throw, and it's incomplete for Randy Moss. And so now one for four in the red zone. And one for seven, Troy, the last two weeks. Yeah, you take a look at this throw, and, and this is pitch and catch for these two guys. And you just put that one on his back shoulder, you know, back away from where the defender is, shield the throw away from him. And it's a pretty easy catch for a touchdown. And, and Tom Brady knows he missed on that one. 22 yard try by Gostowski. And it's a six point lead. More red zone trouble for this New England offense and more frustration for Tom Brady. Patriots have three long drives in this game. 15 play drive, 71 yards, 12 play drive, 53 yards, 13 play drive, 79 yards, a last effort. All three have led to three points each time. One for four in the red zone. Unwilling to try and pound it in, which they did their only successful trip down there, getting a touchdown. Here's Weems on the return for Atlanta, down by six, room to run. Out across the 30. As Troy said in years past, it's been pitch and catch between Brady and Moss in the end zone, trying to pump each other up as they just misfired. 16 10. Completed passes to five different receivers, none of them named Tony Gonzalez. His top threat coming in, and this one is thrown away in the direction of Michael Jenkins. Well, if you take a look at Tony Gonzalez through the first half and some of the things that New England is doing against them, nothing exotic. I mean, they're playing some zone coverages and certainly aren't assigning one defender or putting two on him to keep him from. At least getting some opportunity. You know, even on that last play, he was lined up in the slot, and, and Matt Ryan just simply worked the opposite side of the field. Down the sideline, beautiful throw, and the catch is made by Jenkins. What a perfect pass from Matt Ryan for 26 yards. Well, it sure was, and Mike. Jenkins having him a good day here and I know that Matt Ryan in visiting with him he feels very comfortable with Mike Jenkins and his ability to make the tough catch he made another one on that play that 
That was the fifth catch of the day for Jenkins. Now it's Turner who lowers his shoulder into the body of Merriweather and carries it for seven. Back to the catch by Jenkins. Yeah, you see he's engaged right there. Has no use of his right arm. Has to bring that one in with his left. Great concentration. Now, every day in practice, every team around the league, receivers run up the sidelines, both sidelines in practice, catching the ball with one hand. Second and three, Ryan airs it out down the field, and it's caught. Penalty flag on the play. Jenkins makes the catch into the end zone, but did he push off? Well, there was contact. Looked like that one could maybe go either way. And it's against Jenkins, who shoved Lee Bodden. Pass interference on the offense. Number 12, penalty. Second down. Of course, Michael Jenkins has a huge size advantage. He uses the right arm there. That's a good call. He uses the right arm, basically an arm bar on Bodden to create some separation and then make the play. So Bodden downfield was interfered with by Jenkins. He was approaching 100 yards on the day and he has been the favorite target this afternoon for Matt Ryan. Second and 13. That's a false start against Sam Baker as the crowd tries to get into it. False start, number 72, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Sam's got a heck of a beard going. Wow. Somewhere in that mess is his chin stroke. <laughs> second and 18. Only in the second year of his career, he's been playing for 21. Ryan with all day fires and White, who had lost his footing, had to drill him in the chest. It's third and 18. Roddy White just slips at the top of this route when he starts to come back to the ball, and even then still has a chance. Ryan has made better throws than Tom Brady in this game. But New England leads it by six. Comes underneath, hits Snelling, and Snelling is short of the first down to the 39. Picked up 13. You know, I like the decision there by Matt Ryan. They tried running some verticals down the field. They come underneath to Snelling to pick up. You know, pretty manageable yardage there to where they can at least make a decision on what they want to do. You know, maybe if he could have picked up enough, maybe they try to attempt the field goal instead with where they're at. They're not going to go for it on fourth down. Rather, they're going to punt. But I like where you're going with it. I, I think you could make a strong argument to go for it here. You're at the 38. I think right now if they weren't down six and we were talking about an even game, a tied ball game, they would think a little bit more about that. Well, let's see how good Kane it is. To the 15 yard line. So tanking over up by six, the Patriots at their own 15. Taking over at their own 15 yard line, you look at the offensive leaders. Brady has missed on some throws. He's had receivers drop some throws. Just 130 yards, yet leading by six. 15. Just 25 yards of field position changed on that punt by Kanan as Brady goes down the sideline in the pass, nearly intercepted. Back there was Deku defending on Sam Aiken. 
Let's go for a game break. Here. All right, Kurtz of Tennessee trying to get their first win and trying to send the Jets to their first loss. That's a score that people will pay attention to in New England as Fred Taylor picks up three. Third down coming up for the Patriots. I'll tell you what, Joe, you go back to that first down pass by Tom Brady and, and Thomas Deku should have had another interception. He's had a couple of opportunities now, and I really don't know what Tom Brady was thinking. Deku was in coverage. He was over the top here. He came completely over the top. Help on the outside, and yet Tom Brady just threw it up and should have been intercepted. Third down and seven. Here's Galloway making the catch, but Galloway is brought down short of the first down. It is fourth down and well less than a yard. Brian Williams with a sure hand to tackle. And I can guarantee you everything is pointing towards going forward on fourth down. I mean, as frustrated as the Patriots have been, it's not surprising to me. I don't agree with this. I don't either. With a six point lead backed up, I don't agree with this at all. But that just tells you the frustration that Bill Belichick and this entire offense are feeling. What an opportunity for the Falcons. Hand off to the up back. And it looks like Sammy Morris has enough. He does. But a tense moment for this big crowd. Another sellout. 163rd straight sellout at Gillette Stadium. I will tell you, though, that's the kind of thing that Jimmy Johnson used to do back when I was playing. And. You know, it'll be interesting to see what happens now on this possession because a lot of times as players you want to know that the head coach over there on the sidelines trusts that you're going to be able to pick up a foot or pick up a yard. You know when you have to regardless of where you are on the field the fact that they executed that we'll see what happens now the rest of this possession. It's a lot easier if you're Bill Belichick to make that call than if you're a lot of head coaches in this league as Moss makes the catch up to grab it good for 19 yards. I mean Belichick. Are you saying three, three Super, Super Bowls? Bowls. You saying that has something to do with it? Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> well, Jim, good Zorn, job. Jim Zorn would not make that call. <laughs> Point well taken. And I think Bill Belichick knows that. <laughs> what are you going to do? One of the better throws and catches between Brady and Moss in this game. Abraham coming off the edge doesn't get there. And now Checking no flag. Wow. That's Deku and Randy Moss. Brian Williams was in there as well, and it was Williams who had a hand in holding the left hand of Randy Moss, and uh, Williams got away with it. Well, there were two officials right there watching it. You know, pretty surprising there that that one wasn't called. You know, sometimes you just kind of wonder what these officials are watching, don't you? Yep. To Fred Taylor. And out of the shotgun, Taylor picks up three, so another third and seven coming up for this New England offense. Well, another third down, and overall, New England's been pretty good on third down today. And they've been outstanding on third and one, four for four. One for six on all other third downs. So the overall numbers are good. Third and seven. Brady steps up and fires in the pass to Moss. Caught. First down, New England. That might be the best throw of Brady's day. I tell you, that, that was awfully good because he had to throw that one on a rope, and you see the concentration. Of Randy Moss and, and did he hang on to it on his way down to the ground? Great hands right there of snagging that one in traffic. And he hangs on to it. Excellent, excellent throw and catch by Brady and Moss. Oh, what a tremendous catch by Randy Moss, able to hang on to it, losing it, going to the ground. And he hung on for the catch. Here is a pass complete to Taylor. 
wrestled to the ground after a gain of four by Steven Nicholas. And that was a great tackle there by Steven Nicholas because the, the Falcons brought pressure off the edge. Everybody was locked up man to man. And if Nicholas does not make the tackle there, there is no one else there to make the play. This is the fourth drive for the Patriots. It's lasted 10 or more plays. Second and six. Hand off. Taylor inches outside the 35. Third and short coming up again for the Patriots. Trey Lewis made that last tackle for the Falcons. It's third down and one. As I just mentioned, the Patriots are four for four on third and one in this game. This is all still the result of going for it on fourth down deep in their own territory. I'm not so sure I wouldn't take a shot right here on third and one. They give it to Morris, and Morris runs into Mike Peterson. So now it's fourth down. The ball is inside the 40 and if the Patriots were willing to go for it on fourth and inches backed up near their own end zone they'll go for it on fourth and three. Yeah I was thinking maybe on third and one you take a shot because earlier you go for it and and, and if you feel that you can come back there on fourth and one and pick it up of course they lost yardage so they're going to be forced to throw it here anyway. And a timeout taken by Atlanta. So you know the Patriots one for four going for it on fourth down. They're successful once on this drive. Can they do it again? Fourth and three when we come back. It's fourth down and three. to get it 21 yards on fourth and three you know if you're Brian Williams you're thinking they're going to get to the first down marker and then hook it up great confidence Tom Brady has then in being able to lay it up to Randy Moss throw the fade route in these conditions on fourth down and good execution but you could see Brian Williams anticipating that they're not going to try to go deep but rather they're going to try to pick up five yards and that's why he was underneath that throw. Back into the red zone go the Patriots and back into the arms of the defense goes Sammy Morris no game. The ball comes out. Falcons come out of there with it but right now they're saying that Morris was down and Mike Smith can't wait to throw the challenge flag. Well you've got to see that he's down or that he's not down. It looked to me like his knee was on the ground before the ball came out. I agree with you but Mike Smith throws the challenge flag Beerman knocked it out but it looked like it looked like Morris had his knee on the ground before the ball came out instead of keeping the flag in his sock Mike Smith keeps it in his right pocket and <laughs> he's going to challenge the call. He keeps it where most most coaches keep it. Let's take another look and see if Morris's knee isn't down before the ball comes out. Knee is down there. Uh. Yeah, it looked to me like his knee was down. Atlanta is challenging the ruling on the field of a down by contact. Timeout. I, I think the first look we had of it from the other side, you can see better when the ball actually starts to come out. So we'll look at it. Al Riveron will look at it and we'll get the call when we come back. It's a Falcons challenge. Eric Coleman came away with the fumble. The ruling on the field was that Morris was down before the fumble. Everybody on this crew agrees after looking at it that the knee of Sammy Morris was down before the ball came out. Beerman knocked it out. But we will wait and see what the most important person thinks, and that's Al Riveron. A 
Alberto's been busy under that hood in this game. Well, what I found interesting was that Mike Smith, I think he made an emotional challenge. I don't even know that he waited to see, you know, what the replay showed. I mean, he was immediately reaching for that flag before any replay had been shown. But Alberto Riveron still looking at it. Now, finally, the call. The ruling on the field stands. Atlanta will be charged with a timeout. So now Atlanta, as they trail by six, with just one timeout remaining in this second half, and there's the emotion that you talked about. Yeah, I mean, this is still when Eric Coleman has the ball, and and they're saying that it's Atlanta ball, and you know, the officials hadn't even got it out of his hands yet. He's got the red flag out, and he was challenging without even having had the benefit of seeing what it showed on replay. Second down and ten. of Benjamin Watson with one second remaining in the third quarter it'll be third down and ten outstanding route there by Ben Watson pushing up the field you're going to see him 84 and then he runs the outside route breaking route Eric Coleman expecting maybe an inside route he's got a guard against that he's he's as open as what you're going to get in this league and and just another misfire by Tom Brady that's happened a lot by Brady in this game more than you're used to seeing prior to 2009 underneath for fall there's just nowhere for him to go and now while in the red zone it'll be fourth down field goal try when we come back and here's a 33 yard try by this Guskowski. It's a nine point game. So it is a two score affair now here in Foxborough, and we welcome you inside our booth, Joe and Troy. And, uh, and it has literally been more of the same for this New England Patriots offense. You keep waiting for them to get some sort of traction, and uh, I know the, the muskets fire behind us, which gives you a startle every time, me as well. But it hasn't happened uh, really with this Patriots offense. Well, I think you look at it and as frustrated as Tom Brady is and as many misfires as, it, as there has been, whether it's drop pass, poor throw here and there, that was a key field goal there. It is now a nine point game and now the onus is on Atlanta to be able to do something that they haven't done. We spent a lot of time talking about New England's inefficiencies in the red zone and Atlanta has had their share as well and now they're going to have to go down and show an ability to put the ball into the end zone. Yeah and it's up to Matt Ryan to do it here in Foxborough. He's been able to move the team between the 20s and and then they had that turnover by Michael Turner late in the first half which led to the New England field goal to take the lead before halftime. And now Matt Ryan with basically the entire fourth quarter left will have to get to work. Eric Weems is waiting for the kick. And this one is boom into the back of the end zone. Well this October the American League's best teams collide in a month of unscripted and thrilling moments. It's the ALCS it returns on October 16th and it's followed by the World Series in high definition only on Fox. You know I think if you look at what Atlanta has done this year and even going back to last year heavy run team on first down I, I would expect or they should start thinking about taking some shots on early downs. Which they do here with Ryan and this is Gonzalez and there's his first catch. There is the weapon that hasn't been used so far by the Atlanta offense. Last year Atlanta threw the ball 70 percent of the time on first down. It's not quite that high this year but it's still 60 plus percent. And as a defense you start overloading the box with running defense 
And the easiest down for any quarterback to throw on is first. Pass now to Roddy White and a good play out there by Adalis Thomas. Out on the edge of the defense and a loss of five. We haven't talked about Adalis Thomas a whole lot today, but he's a guy who really is going to have to have a big year for this defense in order for them to ultimately do what they hope to do. You know, as we've talked about, a lot of key players and Adalis, who missed a lot of last season, you know, probably hasn't quite lived up to the hype that he came with when he came here a couple of years ago. Vince Wilfork still not out there for New England. Second and 15 Ryan throws for Jenkins and he drops it incomplete incomplete pass and it's third and 15. Wind is picked up and it's just been a wet day wet football slick field and a third down for the Atlanta offense. The Snelling and he's out of bounds short of a first down. McGowan throws him out after a gain of seven. Yeah, that's just Bill Belichick defense right there. I mean, get him into third and long, play coverage, cover everything down the field, and and force the quarterback to come underneath and then rally and make the tackle. A lot of people sitting at home wondering why Matt Ryan threw it so short. Well, there was nowhere else to throw it. And Bill Belichick, when you're going up against his teams, it's hard and against anyone, particularly against him on third and long. Kanan loses the football and somehow is able to punt it away. Penalty flag is on the field on this play as Falk tiptoes up the sideline with a decent return. There are two flags. Yeah, they probably got a man downfield. He'll, you know, got down the field because he dropped it before he was able to get the ball punted. Ninkovic and Telly Banta Kane almost blocked it, but there are two fouls on this play. Right now, it's a 49 yard punt, 16 yard return by Fall. And we may have another punt if it's against each side. So the officials sort it out. Nine point game, 13 minutes left. You know, it wasn't a bad snap. He just, just wasn't able to secure it. But I tell you, he, he did a good job of at least getting it off. There are two flags on the play. The first foul, the first flag, illegal block in the back, number 88. That flag will be picked up. It was determined it was a side block. The other flag is ineligible downfield. Number 44 on the kicking team. That five yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, timeout. So add five yards on to the end of the run. New England has the football and a nine point lead here in Foxborough. Well, so far in this game, the Patriots have the advantage 88 more rush yards in Atlanta nine more first downs 22 more offensive plays run and 11 and a half minutes more in the time of possession category a nine point lead Edelman gets it on the end around and the rookie Julian Edelman picks up six as Deku makes the play and Randy Moss was involved in the blocking over on that side when Edelman came around the edge and he was looking for a flag I think he thought he might have gotten away there with a push in the back. Take a little better look at it. He goes inside and then there's. Looked worse from the angle that I'm at didn't look like he did much from there. Second down and four. Brady there's Edelman and he drops it. About 50 50 today with some of these 
<laughs> miscues well, some by Brady and some by these receivers that one's on Edelman. Yeah I, I tell you I just you know and he should catch the ball I'm not saying that but I'm still impressed with the fact that he was a quarterback had never played in an NFL game as a wide receiver other than preseason till last week. You know, I mean you can understand some of this Tom Brady's his quarterback for crying out loud he's probably nervous as he can be. Third down and this pass is behind Baker. And so exactly what the Falcons needed they get a three and out. And that drive goes nowhere and Weems will return the punt for Atlanta trying to give his team a jolt. And that was not very good and, and as much as you'd like to say boy great defensive stop there by Atlanta I don't know that they really did much. You know it was really more the lack of execution by New England and did not take you know really any time off the clock. That was not good at all for New England offensively. Brady is at 56 percent completing passes in this game. Weems with a fair catch up near the 25. Mike Smith may have a headache. A couple aspirin, take a swig, and hope his offense gets something going. Still 12 and a half minutes left. Down by nine is Matt Ryan and this Atlanta offense. From their own 26, they do hand it off on first down. Okay, 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 okay. And it's Turner for four. Been impressed with Randy Moss and what he's done on the outside. He was on the injury list this week, Troy, with a bad back. Made a couple of good catches and now trying to get this crowd into it. Yeah, you talk to people within the organization and, and Randy Moss, I mean, whatever has happened wherever he was prior to coming to New England, they say he is one of, if not the hardest working guy in the organization, just a just a great player and a guy who goes about his business like a real pro. Another injury for the Patriots. We'll check it. Come right back. Mike Wright got up. Got over to the sideline and something to his upper body. Second down and six. Blitz coming and the handoff is to Turner. We go for a game break. All right, Kurt. Jacksonville starts the day 0 and 2. 2 and 0 Falcons, 1 and 1 Patriots, third and three Atlanta. Ryan just throws it away with Jarvis Green on his back. Roddy White, the intended receiver. Hey, you remember earlier in the game when they ran that same play on third down when they needed to pick up the first they sprint Matt Ryan to the right this time the Patriots play it very very well. You see James Sanders the safety he gets underneath that throw and keeps Matt Ryan from having a clean lane to deliver and he just has to throw it away. Kane and dropped the last snap. Field that's Finneran down there with Weems. A three yard return. Patriots have the ball on a nine point lead. How about a bouquet to this offensive line for the New England Patriots and the job they've done? Brady was hit a lot last week, wasn't sacked. The game against the Jets has not been sacked in this game. Well protected here in the pass to Moss. 129 consecutive pass plays without allowing a sack. That's the longest streak alive in the NFL. And Matt Light has handled John Abraham out on the edge. Those two first faced each other back in 2002. Abraham used to play with the Jets. Yeah, I'd give a game ball to Matt Light and the job that he's done against John Abraham. Abraham was the one guy coming into this game that Belichick was a little concerned about, knowing 
that he single handedly could dictate tempo and change the outcome of the game as a defensive player and yet Matt Light's done a great job against them without much help. Brady uses the first time out of the half for New England. Here's that battle. You get a speed rusher like John Abraham Matt Light struggled in the first game in the Buffalo Bills. Aaron Schobel in that game was able to get some pressure on Tom Brady but today against another premier pass rusher Matt Light just running him by and of course to be able to do that then the inside guys Dan Copen Stephen Neal Logan Mankins those guys then have to do a good job to allow Brady to step up in the pocket so it all works in unison but but Light did a good job in this game. Abraham coming in with 20 and a half sacks his last 19 games 86 sacks in his career. And two sacks in the opener at home against Miami. There has not been one sack in this game on either side. That's false. Sidestep to tackler. He got right around Mike Peterson. Gained five. Loft in the middle linebacker on the stop. Some of the things that New England's had some success with when they've gotten in the shotgun with Falk in the backfield with Brady is spread out Atlanta defensively and Atlanta then has played coverage when you've got the kind of speed that, it, that New England has on the outside with Galloway and Moss generally that's what you're going to get and then the numbers favor the offense being able to run the football with that quick handoff. Falk cuts it upfield he's into Atlanta territory to the 49 it's third down. As Falk got two, and this is an important third down for this Atlanta defense to try and get a stop, get the football back, as Brady just wants to eat some clock up by nine points. Yeah, this possession for New England, they're now doing what they wanted to do on the previous possession when they went three and out and run the football, pick up some first downs, take some time off the clock, and try to move it down there and get some points, turn this in to at least, you know, a two touchdown game then for Atlanta. Five man rush and this one's broken up and a flag comes in. Grimes was on the back of Randy Moss. And it's against Atlanta pass interference. Pass on interference. Brent Grimes. Defense. Looks like he got 20. him with the left. The ball well, he got him with the right arm. Foul. Automatic first down. And that's right where the official was standing. He was off to the side so he could see that right arm and, and Grimes hooked Moss then around the waist and turned him enough to draw the flag. So that sets up a first down at the Atlanta 40. It's a big conversion by penalty for a first down for New England. Here's Taylor left side. Not going down easily and he turned that into a four yard gain. Mike Peterson made the stop. You heard Tom Brady there yell out and point to number 50 middle linebacker Curtis Lofton and on passing plays it's important for the quarterback to identify who the middle linebacker who the Mike backer is and then the offensive lineman know exactly who is blocking who. But you can't just do that on pass plays. You've got to do it on running plays so the defense doesn't always know when you're throwing. Here's play action from Brady. Going to air it out. Moss. End zone. A juggle and incomplete. Eric Coleman was back there defending. Moss got his hands on it and could not haul it in. <laughs> I think Brady's wondering what he has to do to get a touchdown. Yo, know, good route by Randy Moss going straight to the corner. It's just speed. And Tom Brady lays that one perfectly. You know, well thrown ball. You know, over the outstretched hands of Eric Coleman, the, the defensive back for Atlanta, but just not able to connect. Now it's third down. And now the 
the Patriots spend a timeout. Take a break, come back, third down coming up for New England as they lead it by nine. It's third down and six. Brady and Moss almost hooked up a minute ago. The last time there was a Brady to Moss touchdown in a game that mattered was the Super Bowl two seasons ago. February 3rd, 2008 against the Giants. 602 days ago. They've come close a couple of times in this game, but Moss could not haul that last one in. There's the day for Brady, over 200 yards, but a lot of incompletions. Still a good day considering how many missed opportunities they've had. It's third down here. Brady with plenty of time now has a hand on him. Throws. Baker right in stride. Touchdown. career touchdown pass for Brady who's the first quarterback to have 200 or more with under 100 career interceptions and they finally get it in the end zone through the air and it came from outside the red zone thirty six yards Troy for the touchdown yeah it came because Tom Brady was able to buy some time and allow Chris Baker to get down the field. Weapons. Moss, Watson, all the running backs. Baker has his first touchdown in his last 25 games on the other end of this. Abraham trying to reach around Matt Light to get a hold of Brady, and Brady's able to get away from that hold. And then you've got Chris Baker, who just ran up the sidelines, and then Tom finds him. It looked like he was Peterson who was trying to cover him, and that's just difficult to do you, it was it was at that point basically a scramble drill by Chris Baker and he just took it up the sideline and and was able to get it in so two catches today Baker came in with two on the season last year was with the Jets This game is still a two possession game. 16 point lead. But a little more breathing room. Heck, a lot more breathing room for New England as Brady finally gets one through the air. As we said, career touchdown throw number 200. I'll tell you, the guy who seemed the most excited after that touchdown was Matt Light. I mean, a guy who's been in. Super Bowl games and everything else and and he was thinking that was the greatest thing that had happened in a while. Here's Weems from inside the five out to the twenty five that's it. Weekdays we ask you to make lunchtime your new prime time as Fox brings you lunch with benefits log on to check out new episodes of original sports shows delivered to your desktop every Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern. Tomorrow, don't miss the after party with Jay Glazer, which will be hosted tomorrow by Jared Allen, who's filling in for Jay, who's off for Yom Kippur. And then you expect the unexpected tomorrow only at FoxSports.com on MSN and a live chat with Troy Aikman at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Buckle your seatbelt. The electrifying. <laughs> From number eight. <laughs> Pass intended for Snelling. Incomplete second and ten. And if you look at what's going on on the sideline between Mike Smith and Bill Belichick, Smith in his second year, Belichick in his tenth season here in New England. I think Mike Smith is all about positive reinforcement. Uh, Bill Belichick, uh, not so much. No. <laughs> He's kind of the newspaper rolled up across the nose. <laughs> That's out to the 31 caught by Marty Booker. And, and I know you and I have visited before about Mike Smith. I mean, everybody talks about Matt Ryan. The Falcons also have the right head coach here who's done a brilliant job in 
helping to resuscitate this franchise in the wake of the Michael Vick issues. 11 and 5 last year, a wild card team, and growing week by week. It's third and four. That ball's batted into the air and incomplete. Myron Pryor got his hands up and knocked it into the air. It's fourth down, and the Falcons are going to send their punt team on. Yeah, Tully Banikane comes off the edge, and then guys in the middle not able to get a rush. They get their hands up, and ball goes up in the air. Fortunate that that one wasn't intercepted. I know Mike Smith had a decision to make there. You know, we're going to run out of time. We've got to score twice and get two two point conversions. But this thing gets away from you in a hurry if you don't convert. Probably the right thing here to punt. Ugly punt, but it takes a good bounce. And will hop out of bounds just outside the 21. Well, they have really changed this stadium and the look of this complex and what a job they have done. Patriots Hall of Fame opened at Patriot Place. Over 36,000 square feet, interactive exhibits, thousands of artifacts in the history of this franchise, which celebrates its 50th year, the beginnings in the AFL. You know, I wasn't able to go through the Patriots Hall of Fame, but I did get a chance to see a lot of the development that has taken place here around Gillette Stadium. We didn't have a game here last year, Joe. The last time we were here was was in 2007 and a lot has changed. I mean they have done a remarkable job of developing here around this stadium. Figure to get a lot of the ground game and that means Fred Taylor who's been pretty impressive. Lofton was in on that stop as was Chauncey Davis. Gain of one second and nine. Patriots rushing totaled the first two games 156 yards today alone against Atlanta 156 yards so they got that part of their offense going. Yeah and I don't know that they're going to be able to get back to what we saw in 07. You know I mean that was pretty special and so the one thing we do know about Belichick is he's going to adjust to what he has to do. I think this team is going to be a little more balanced a little bit like they were a year ago with Matt Castle as their quarterback. More from Taylor. He still looks like he can push the pile and has relatively fresh legs. Longtime Jaguar. Nicholas on the stop, a gain of six. Well, and Lawrence Maroney, you know, I mean, he went down in this ball game, and, and, you know, when he came onto the scene as a rookie back in 06, you just thought, wow, is this guy going to be unbelievable? And he's just had a hard time staying healthy. He missed most of last year with a shoulder injury, and then of course here today and you know he's a hard runner staying healthy is always going to be a challenge for him but he's got special talents. Empty backfield on third and three and it's Brady hitting Moss. I'll tell you what that ball comes out but Moss was down out across the 40 first down Grimes on the stop if Moss had a bad back coming in. He certainly hasn't played like it's bothering him at all. He has been impressive. <laughs> yeah. Really, every phase is every yeah. phase of this game. He's he's a special player. I, I you know I feel bad for him in some ways because he has got lumped in some of it by you know his own actions. But I tell you, he is a smart football player. Bill Belichick says he's the smartest wide receiver that he's ever been around. Mike Wojcik, their strength coach, is a friend of mine who was the strength coach in Dallas for a number of years. Said there's not a harder working guy in the weight room than Randy Moss. Here's Morris out of the backfield makes a catch and now it's time for Brady to pad his stats as Morris picks up 17. You know I laughed a little bit Joe because when you said that you know Moss and his and his back you know coming into this game bothering him you know I, the defensive players as a group should have some sore backs really I mean this group coming in was expected to be the group that had to take some time to come together the offense would carry them and yet the defense through the first two games and then you know they've gotten a little bit more out of their offense here today but the defense has done a good job and without some of those key guys that we talked about. And off to Taylor. 
Okay, okay, okay. Take a look ahead to the slate of games. The NFL on Fox. Doubleheader day Giants and Chiefs early, Seahawks, Colts, Bucks, and Redskins. And then late, the Cowboys at the Broncos, one of two games. You can check your local listings for the game and time in your area. And of course, we're going to be doing the game there in Denver with the Cowboys and Josh McDaniel. And, and you know, not a lot's been said about it, but I'm not so sure that Tom Brady doesn't miss that relationship. You know, with Josh McDaniel. Anytime you lose a guy that you're close with, that's calling the plays and you have that relationship with, it's an adjustment. Taylor off the left side to the 36. Gain of three. Coleman on the stop. You know, in Atlanta, I know they're going to get on their plane and fly back to Atlanta, and Mike Smith and and that staff and, and everyone else is going to think about a lot of missed chances. You know, I mean, they hung in here. And they had some opportunities and they were able to keep New England from getting the touchdowns in the red zone. And I know that that's that's how every coaching staff is after a tough loss. You know you always look at the things that you could have done better. But uh, you know Arthur Blank. I think he did a heck of a job in the hiring of Mike Smith. Third down and four and off to Taylor. Fred Taylor got near the first down yardage but he's a yard short. And it's fourth down for New England. You know the other thing about Atlanta, we talk about the fact that in franchise history, they've not had back-to-back -back winning seasons. One, I think after this year, we won't be saying that anymore. And and I think that as long as they have Matt Ryan as their quarterback, they're going to have a lot of winning seasons here over the next decade. We are at the two-minute warning in Foxborough. Fourth down and one for the Patriots who lead it by 16 points about to start this season. Two and one. Two minutes left in this game and a quick throw. Randy Moss on the outside takes it down inside. The 30 to the 25 yard line. You know, we came in talking about is this a good time to catch the Patriots and the fact that there may never be a good time to catch the Patriots, especially coming off a loss, which they had last week at the Meadowlands. You just didn't figure that Tom Brady was going to lose back to back games, and he has avoided that here this afternoon. Yeah, I don't know if there's ever a good time to catch New England either, and, and if it is, I, I, I definitely don't think it's after they've had a loss. By 20. Here's Taylor. That's Peterson. In fact, the New England Patriots have lost back-to-back -back games only one time since the 03-04 season. So that combination of Bill Belichick and his quarterback Tom Brady it hasn't been pretty all day in fact at times it, it really hasn't looked all that good but here they are leading by 16 points with the football about to start two and one New England will next have a home game against Baltimore Atlanta will go home and they'll chew on this loss with a bye week then they're at San Francisco Atlanta just spent their final time out a lot of questions about this New England defense. They lost Vince Wilfork in the first half of this game out with an ankle injury. We didn't see him again and yet even with that scheme wise they were able to shut down the Atlanta running game and then once the score became more lopsided the Falcons became more one dimensional and played right into the Patriots hands. I mean here we are three games into the 09 season and not one team has yet to go over 300 yards of offense against this New England defense. That was that was such the concern you know when the season began. It's Neil downtime here in Foxborough. Understand that we're going to try and get the audience to the end of the Washington Detroit game. And when you go there realize that Detroit has not won a game since December 23rd 2007 they've lost 19 straight Washington is trailing could start the season one and two as they trail 19 14 with two and a half minutes left as Jim Schwartz Matthew Stafford and the Lions could get their first win meanwhile here in Foxborough hugs on the sideline for New England Tom Brady and the Patriots are two and one as are the Atlanta Falcons with Matt Ryan.
and those two had never met until maybe during pregame definitely right there coming together after this 26 to 10 win for the Patriots at home over the Falcons. We'll come back and then get you to the Lions and the Redskins after this break. New England wins it 26.